Does this sound familiar? It's three in the morning, and once again, you find yourself getting out of bed, making that half-asleep trip to the bathroom, and it's not even the first time tonight. Those constant interruptions don't just destroy your rest, they drain your energy, your focus, and your vitality the next day. You feel the frustration building with every trip in the dark, while your partner, of course, sleeps peacefully without a care. And you ask yourself, why me? Is this just part of getting older? Many people believe it is. They give in to the idea of endless fatigue, the fear of tripping in the darkness, and the thought that they may never sleep through the night again. But I am here to tell you something important and clear. It does not have to be that way. You do not have to accept sleepless nights and days filled with exhaustion. Throughout my career, I have dedicated myself to understanding the mysteries of the bladder and urinary system. Thousands of men and women have come to my office feeling desperate and hopeless. Yet time and time again, I have witnessed remarkable transformations. Today, I am not here to give you generic advice. I want to share with you a key strategy in urology, a method that focuses not only on how to drink water, but when to drink it. This technique can finally help you reclaim your nights. It is such a simple and logical approach, yet so often ignored, that you will wonder how you never heard of it before. Stay with me, because what you are about to learn will not only change your nights, it may change your life. But before I give you the exact method, you need to understand the real scope of this problem. Did you know that up to 70% of adults over 60 wake up at least once a night to urinate? For many, it happens two, three, or even more times. This condition has a name, nocturia. And I want to be very clear about something. Although it is common, it is not normal. This is not an innocent side effect of aging. It is a warning signal, a siren ringing in the night, and ignoring it can have far more serious consequences than you think. Stay with me until the end because I am going to reveal not only why it happens, but also the precise method that we teach our patients to break this exhausting cycle. I promise you, what I share can truly transform your nights. Section one, the silent epidemic and its hidden dangers. We call nocturia a silent epidemic for a reason. People rarely talk about it. They endure it quietly, often with embarrassment or resignation. But in my practice, I hear real stories. I have listened to Carlos, a 72-year-old grandfather who loved building ships in bottles, but had to stop because his hands trembled from lack of sleep. I have listened to Marta, a 68-year-old retired teacher who fell and fractured her hip during one of her nightly trips to the bathroom, an accident that took away her independence. These are not just stories. They are the raw truth. The issue goes far beyond simply feeling tired. Let's be very clear about the dangers that come with those nightly trips to the bathroom. First, there is the risk of falling. In the dark, half asleep, your balance is poor. The path to the bathroom becomes an obstacle course of carpets and furniture, and one wrong step can lead to a serious injury that changes your life. For older adults, a hip fracture can mark the beginning of a rapid decline in health. Second, the impact on your cognitive health. Deep sleep is not a luxury, it is a necessity. During the night, your brain cleanses itself, consolidates memories, and clears away the toxins that build up during the day. When your sleep is broken again and again, that cleansing process is disrupted. The result, brain fog, poor concentration, forgetfulness, and over time, an increased risk of neurodegenerative diseases. It is not age that makes you feel forgetful. It is the lack of deep, restorative sleep. Third, the strain on your heart. Each time you wake suddenly, your body releases stress hormones. Your blood pressure and heart rate rise sharply. When this happens several times a night, every night, you are placing your cardiovascular system under constant stress. Multiple studies have shown that severe nocturia is linked to a higher risk of hypertension and other heart problems. And finally, there is the emotional cost. Chronic fatigue steals your joy. It makes you irritable, anxious, and can even lead to depression. It keeps you from the activities and people you love. 
trapping you in a cycle of exhaustion that becomes hard to break. You stop feeling like yourself. But why does this happen more often as we age? There are several reasons. First, your body produces less of a hormone called antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, at night. ADH tells your kidneys to slow down urine production while you sleep. With less ADH, the urine factory keeps running. Second, your bladder's capacity can decrease over time. And third, something many people don't know, the redistribution of fluids. If your ankles tend to swell during the day, that fluid does not just disappear. When you lie down, gravity no longer keeps it in your legs. It flows back into your bloodstream, passes through your kidneys, and ends up in your bladder, waking you up a few hours later. Now that you understand how serious this is and the science behind it, we can begin to correct the mistakes and build the solution. Section 2. Dismantling the Myths Before learning the right strategy, we have to stop doing things wrong. Most people, even with good intentions, make choices that actually worsen their nocturia. Let's break down the three most common myths. Myth 1. To avoid urinating at night, I should drink as little water as possible during the day. This is one of the most common mistakes, and believe me, one of the most harmful. It sounds logical, doesn't it? Less water in, less urine out. But your body does not work that way. When you go through the day dehydrated, your urine becomes highly concentrated. That concentrated urine can irritate the bladder walls. Imagine pouring lemon juice on a cut. That is how your bladder feels when the urine is too concentrated. This irritation makes your bladder more sensitive, sending false signals to your brain that it's time to go, even when it isn't full. Also, when you finally drink water in the afternoon to quench that built-up thirst, your body, which has been conserving fluids all day, processes that liquid all at once, and often does so at night. Paradoxically, drinking too little during the day can actually cause more nighttime bathroom trips. Myth 2. The problem is that I have a small bladder. It has always been like that. Although some people do have smaller bladder capacity in the vast majority of adult nocturia cases, the problem is not the size of the bladder, it is the rate of urine production by the kidneys during the night. As we mentioned earlier, reduced ADH levels and the return of fluid from the legs are the true culprits. You could have the largest bladder in the world, but if your kidneys keep producing urine continuously, you will still wake up. Blaming a small bladder only distracts you from addressing the real cause. And no, this is not something you just have to live with. Myth 3. A glass of wine or beer relaxes me and helps me sleep. It cannot be that bad. This one is especially deceptive. While alcohol might make you drowsy at first, it actually disrupts your rest, especially when it comes to bathroom trips. Alcohol is a strong diuretic. Even worse, it suppresses the release of the valuable ADH hormone. So when you drink before bed, you are creating a harmful combination. You add liquid to your system and simultaneously disable your body's natural mechanism that prevents nighttime urination. It is the perfect setup for nocturia. In addition, alcohol interferes with the quality of your sleep and often causes awakenings during the second half of the night right when your bladder also starts sending signals to wake up. Avoiding alcohol, especially in the hours before bedtime, is one of the simplest and most effective changes you can make. Now that you know what does not work, you have already taken a big step forward. You have cleared the ground. You are ready to learn the method that truly works. Section 3. The Intelligent Hydration Strategy Now that we've cleared away the myths, Let's focus on the solution. This is the method that has helped countless patients finally sleep through the night. Forget the idea of drinking less. The new mantra is drink smarter. This approach follows a simple five-step plan that is easy to remember. Think of it as your personalized hydration schedule that works with your body, not against it. Let's go step by step, and afterward, I'll give you two extra keys to make this system foolproof. Step one, advance your hydration, load up in the morning. The main principle is to drink most of your water during the first half of the day. 
The golden rule I share with my patients is this, try to drink about 75% of your total daily fluids before four in the afternoon. How do you do that? When you wake up, start with one or two full glasses of water to activate your body. During the morning, keep a bottle with you and take small sips regularly. Do not wait until you feel thirsty. Thirst is already a sign that you are dehydrated. Have another glass with lunch. This gives your kidneys the entire day to process fluids while you are active and upright. You are helping your body work efficiently. By the time four o'clock comes, you will be well hydrated and ready to transition toward the night. Step two, smooth the transition, land gently. From four in the afternoon, don't stop drinking completely, but begin to reduce gradually. This is the landing phase. Between four and dinner time, limit your intake, maybe half a glass if you are thirsty. Dinner is key. Try to eat at least three hours before going to bed. During dinner, drink only what you need to swallow food comfortably, just a few sips, not a full glass. This gradual reduction tells your body that it is time to slow down urine production and prepare for rest. Step three, interrupt in time, respect the sacred zone. This is the strictest and perhaps the most important step. Create a sacred window of two hours before bedtime when you avoid all liquids. If you go to bed at 10, your last sip should be at eight. No exceptions. Those two hours allow your kidneys to perform their final filtration and send that last bit of urine to the bladder before you sleep. If you drink within that window, your kidneys will still be working at full speed when you lie down, practically scheduling a bathroom trip for one or two in the morning. If your mouth feels dry, rinse without swallowing or take a tiny sip, but not a full drink. This two hour rule is sacred. Step four, the electrolyte anchor. This is a simple trick that improves how your body absorbs water. Hydration is not just about how much water you drink, it's about how well your body uses it. Electrolytes help the water reach your cells. In your first glass of water in the morning, add a small pinch of unrefined sea salt and a squeeze of lemon juice. The salt provides sodium, which helps your cells absorb the water, and the lemon adds potassium, which balances the process. This little boost makes your morning hydration more efficient and can reduce your thirst later in the day. Step five, the smart dinner, control the saboteurs. What you eat matters just as much as what you drink. For your evening meal, avoid spicy or acidic foods that irritate the bladder. Too much sugar or simple carbohydrates can increase urine production. Foods with a high water content, like soups, watermelon, or cucumbers, are best eaten earlier in the day. Chocolate and caffeine both stimulate the bladder, so no coffee, tea, or sodas. Choose a dinner rich in protein and cooked vegetables. This keeps your blood sugar stable and prevents your system from overworking overnight. And there it is, the complete method. It is not magic. It is simple science applied correctly. Section four, the support techniques, enhancing the results. If the intelligent hydration method is the engine, these support techniques are the high performance tires. They help you get the best possible results from your effort. Support technique one, the double emptying. Make sure your bladder is truly empty before bed. Have you ever gone to the bathroom before sleeping only to feel the urge again 20 minutes later? That happens because you did not empty your bladder completely. The double emptying technique is simple but powerful. Just before going to bed, go to the bathroom and sit down, even if you are a man. Sitting relaxes the pelvic floor muscles and helps the bladder empty more fully. When you finish, stay seated for about 30 to 60 seconds, relax again, then lean slightly forward and try to urinate once more. You might be surprised how often a bit more comes out, and that small amount can be the difference between sleeping through the night or waking up at three in the morning. Make it part of your nightly ritual. Support technique two, the gravity elevator. Now let's use gravity in your favor. Remember the fluid that tends to pool in your legs during the day? You can prevent that from disturbing your sleep. One or two hours before bed, while reading or watching TV, elevate your legs above the level of your heart. Rest them on cushions, on the sofa, or on the bed. 
This encourages that trapped fluid to move back into circulation before you lie down. Your kidneys will process it while you are still awake, and you can eliminate it during your last bathroom trip before sleeping. You are essentially urinating your legs before they send that fluid to your bladder during the night. Wearing compression socks during the day can also help prevent fluid from building up in the first place. Support technique three, managing salt intake. In the morning, we use a small pinch of salt to improve absorption, but too much salt in your general diet can make nocturia worse. When you eat a lot of salt, your body retains water to dilute it. That makes you thirstier and leads you to drink more. On top of that, your kidneys must work harder to eliminate the excess sodium, and they need more water to do that, which becomes urine. Pay attention to processed foods, sausages, and ready-made meals, as these often contain large amounts of hidden salt. Cooking at home gives you control over what goes into your meals. Reducing salt will not only help your bladder, but will also benefit your blood pressure and your heart. Section five, taking back your nights. We have uncovered nocturia for what it really is, not just a nuisance, but a thief of your well-being. We have broken down the myths that kept you trapped and given you a science-based method along with simple daily techniques to regain control. I still remember my patient Carlos, the one who built bottle ship models. After just two weeks following this protocol, he called me, his voice filled with energy. Doctor, he said, last night I slept seven hours straight. Seven. I had forgotten what that felt like. This morning, my hands were steady again. I went back to my workshop. I not only sleep more, I feel alive again. That kind of transformation is possible for you, starting tonight. Regaining your sleep is a decision, the decision to apply what you now know, your action plan. Advance your hydration. Drink most of your fluids before four in the afternoon. Smooth the transition. Reduce intake after four and drink lightly at dinner. Respect your sacred two-hour zone. No liquids before bed. Support your body. Use the double emptying technique. Elevate your legs and keep salt under control. You now have the knowledge, the tools, and the power to change your nights. You do not have to settle for sleeplessness or fatigue. If this information has helped you, I ask three small things. First, click the like button so this message can reach more people who need it. Second, subscribe so you don't miss future health tips that could change your life. And third, and this is very important, go down to the comments and tell me how many times you wake up each night. Share your number. There is no shame here, only a community of people who truly understand what you are going through. By writing it, you are taking the first step toward recovery and helping others realize they are not alone in this journey. Thank you for your time and your trust. Now go and prepare for the best night's sleep you've had in years. You deserve it.